welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया विश्वेश सच्चिदानंद वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संजरी हर्ति लीलया so far we said that the theory of compounding in paninian grammar is called samartha theory we studied the meaning of samartha and the first meaning of samartha is capable of that is capable of expressing the interconnected meanings that is a word unit capable of expressing the interconnected meanings so for example a pratipadika a mere nominal root cannot be said to be samartha as it cannot express the interconnected meanings on its own that is without the pratyaya getting added to it it is only when the pratyaya will be added to this pratipadika and that pratyaya has to be a supratyaya then it will become a pad it has to be a pad in this case a subandha formed by adding a supratyaya to a pratipadika which will be capable of expressing the interconnected meaning and then also a tingantha where ting suffix is added to a verbal root dhatu which is capable of expressing the interconnected meanings this is the first meaning of samartha pratipadika and dhatu are stated to be the two prakritis and sub and ting are stated to be the vibhakti pratyayas which are added to these two respectively now these two pratyayas they show the interrelation of the pratipadika with another pratipadika and the pratipadika with the dhatu or the verbal action we have seen this in the previous lectures we also explained this meaning of samartha previously then we studied the second meaning of samartha namely having the same meaning which is samaha arthaha what this means is that the interrelated subandhas interlinked subandhas are eligible to be compounded then they undergo the process of compounding as laid down in paninian grammar this process of compounding involves several types of operations like addition of the suffix at the end of the samasa or the modification 
in the first member of the compound or the modification in the last member of the compound, the sequence of the words in the compound and so on and so forth. There are several types of operations which are part of this process of compounding. And thus the compound gets derived step by step with the help of rules laid down in the grammar of Panini. And we shall study this derivation process also in the coming lectures. And will generate output in the form of a nominal root or a pratipadika. So we start with interlinked suvantas, take them as input and generate an output in the form of a pratipadika. Now this pratipadika will mean the same as interlinked subantas from where we started. Now this is what is samaha arthaha, samarthaha. The pratipadika, output pratipadika means the same thing as the input interlinked subantas. This output meaning will be one unit. This is what is the meaning of samartha as a second explanation. Then we studied the distinction between ikarthi bhava and vipeksha in the light of the primary source in the form of samarthanika, which is a part of the great Vyakarana Mahabhashya composed by Patanjali around 150 BCE. Patanjali noted down various factors which distinguish Ekarthi Bhava and Vyapeksha. In conclusion, we also stated that it is the Vyapeksha which is interlinkage of words in the sentence which forms the basis of formation of the samasa and then as an output what is generated is described as ekarthi bhava. So let us study the word ekarthi bhava and the concept ekarthi bhava that emerges out of the explanation of this particular word. The literal explanation of the word ekarthi bhava is given on this particular slide. We have also provided the derivation with the derivation of the word ekarthi bhava. So the explanation of ekarthi bhava is na ekarthaha ekarthaha bhavati. Ekartha means one meaning. So na ekarthaha not one meaning becomes one meaning. Not one meaning refers to more than one meanings. That is two meanings onwards. So two meanings becoming one meaning is what is the explanation. To put it in other words, to match the wording of Ekarthi Bhava, we can say that Na ikarthasya, ikarthasya bhavaha, the state of being one meaning out of two meanings. The state of two meanings becoming one meaning is what is ekarthi bhava. What this indicates is something that we shall study hereafter. But first let us take a look at the derivation process of this word ekarthi bhava as per the grammar of Panini. So here there are two elements ekartha followed by what is known as the suffix chvi which is added in the sense of abhuta tad bhava and then we have the word bhava. Now this chvi suffix gets 
deleted. So we have ekartha plus chvi plus bhava at the beginning. But before deleting, this chvi suffix brings about the change in ekartha. That is the substitution of e in place of a. And so we have ekarthi plus chvi plus bhava. Chvi is deleted. That is, it is a zero suffix. So we have ekarthi plus bhava. Finally, we get the form ekarthi bhava. This is how the word ekarthi bhava is derived in Panimian grammar. What it implies, what it means is the following. Something which does not have one meaning is made to have one meaning. Thus we have two words in a sentence. They have separate meanings. So there are two meanings. Obviously more than one meanings. Now these two words in the process of compounding are made one. So two words are made one. And similarly, two word meanings are made to have one meaning. This is what is Ekarthi Bhava. This is an important feature of Ekarthi Bhava which assumes the merger of two elements as far as the meaning is concerned, which is primary which is linked with the words which express this meaning. There are three features of Ekarthi Bhava stated on this slide. They were also stated earlier in this particular course, but let us study them one by one in some detail. Now, the three features are Aikapadya, Aikarthya and Aikasvarya. Repeat, Aikapadya or Ekapadatta, which means state of being one word, Aikarthya or Ekarthata, which means state of being one meaning, and Aikasvarya or Ekasvarata, state of being one accent. These are the three features of Ekarthi Bhava. So in the sentence, there are two separate words denoting two separate yet interlinked meanings having two separate accents. In the compounding process, the two words merge into one, two meanings merge into one and two accents as well merge into one and behave as one in the output form of the sentence. Let us now look at Aikapadya with some example. Aikapadya or Ekapadata means state of being one word. So if we have Ramaha Lakshmanascha Gachataha Ramaha Lakshmanascha Gachataha. So here we have Ramaha as a separate word, Lakshmanaha also as a separate word, Ch as a separate word, and Gachataha, another independent separate word. Now Ramaha, Lakshmanaha, and Ch, they are all interrelated and therefore they get compounded and we get the output in the form of Rama Lakshmana as a Pratipadika to which the soup is added, which corresponds with Tas in Gachataha. And so it is Prathama Dvivachana, which is Rama Lakshmana. So Rama Lakshmana is one Pratipadika, which is an output generated from the input consisting of three padas. So Ramaha, Lakshmanaha, Cha, there are three padas, but Rama Lakshmana is one pada. So Ramaha, Lakshmanaha, Cha, Gachataha, 
this is a sentence having four padas but the feature of aikapadya tells us that rama lakshmana gachataha has got only two padas similarly the feature aikarthya or ekarthata which means state of being one meaning so when we have ramaha lakshmanaha ch gachataha these are the meanings that are understood rama plus sahitya lakshmana and then prathama purusha dvivachana kartru vartamana kala gamana kriya rama is the meaning of ramaha sahitya is the meaning of ch lakshmana is the meaning of lakshmanaha and gachataha means prathama purusha dvivachana kartru vartamana kala gamana kriya so there are four independent brackets denoting four independent meanings which are of course interlinked in a particular manner now the first three brackets get merged in the process of compounding and so we have sahitya padrama lakshmana as one meaning and prathama purusha द्विवचन कर्तृ वर्तमान काल गमन क्रिया एस द सेकेंड मीनिंग दिस इज वॉट हैपन्स इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ कंपाउंडिंग एकार्थता थ्री मीनिंग्स गेट मर्ज इन टू वन मीनिंग दिस इज वॉट इज ऐकार्थ्य एंड ऑल्सो ऐकस्वर्य सो राम लक्ष्मण च गच्छत there is an accent in ramaha there is a, an accent in lakshmanaha there is no accent in ch and no accent in gachataha now when ramaha and lakshmanaha and ch when they get compounded we have the word rama lakshmana as the pratipadika which will have only one accent so we have rama lakshmana gachataha which is made up of two elements rama lakshmana with one accent and gachataha no accent so four independent words having different system of accents ramaha lakshmanaha where there are two independent words having independent accents they are merged together and one output form rama lakshmana is generated and this form will have only one accent which is at the end this is the third feature namely aikasvarya or ekasvarata meaning the state of being one accent this is an important feature of the ekarthi bhav and we have taken an example of the dvandva samasa but this is true of all types of samasas namely avyayi bhav bahuvrihi and also dvandva even though these three features were mentioned in a particular manner if we follow strictly the process of speech production described in the paniniya shiksha that we have studied earlier we will arrange these three in the following manner first comes aikarthya that is state of being one meaning as desired by the speaker obviously this aikarthya is part of the arthakasha the space of meaning this forces to have aikapadya which is the next part in the sequence the state of being one word and then aikasvarya the state of being one accent these two are part of the shabdakasha the space of the shabd the word this is how we can place these three features in a sequence 
Aikarthya first, Aikapadya then, and finally Aikasvarya. These are the three features of Ekarthi Bhava and Samasa. Let us also look at some other technical terms. For example, Vritti. Vritti means a typical word building process described in the grammar where more than two elements come together and bring about another new word as an output. Samasa is also a type of Vritti where there are two words that are brought together, two interlinked words that are brought together and that is the input and the process happens and the output generated is one independent new element, new word. And we have already seen the features of this newly generated word and newly generated meaning and the accent. The feature of this vritti is parārthya. Parārthya. Parārthata. What it means is new composite meaning is generated which propels the word formation process that is compounding. So new composite meaning is also generated. This is what is the feature of parārthya. So there are five types of vrittis generally described in Paninian grammar. Krit, Tadhita, Samasa, Sanadhyanta and Ekashesha and we are studying Samasa and we have already studied Tatpurusha Samasa in the first course and we are focused on studying the remaining three Samasas namely Avyayi Bhava, Bahuvrihi and Dvandva in this particular course. So all these Samasas they come under what is known as Vritti primarily because the feature of the Vritti is Parārthata or Parārthya, the new composite meaning generated. The merged meaning is the characteristics of the process of compounding. Two meanings merged together. Also, merged word form and also the accent is the characteristic of the process of compounding. So when the word forms are merged, there are different modifications that are likely to happen in the word forms. As we have seen the example of go becoming gu in chitragu and so on and so forth. Same is the case with accent. If there are two words having independent accent, both the independent accents go away and the merged output might have an another independent accent. So these are the important features of Samasa as a Vritti which is primarily described to have the feature of Parārthata or Parārthya. Now let us come to an extremely important question because Samasa is composed out of two elements there are two meanings, there are two words and there are two accents and they are merged into one. Now, what is the relation of this newly generated output with its earlier constituents? If one accepts that there is an interrelation between the newly generated form and its constituents, then comes the next question as to which amongst the two elements becomes the head in the newly generated output. So on this slide we address this particular question. So in the process of compounding 
when two elements become one, which one of them becomes the head of the newly generated one output. So we have x plus y, that means that they are getting merged together and we get the output in the form of x, y within the two square brackets indicating that it has become one unit. Now there is a correlation of x plus y as an input with the output namely x, y. And then this question which one of the two x and y becomes the head in x, y. Now there are four possible options. Either x is the head or y is the head or x, y both are the head or none is the head. That means some other outside element acts as the head of this newly formed unit. These are the four options available as the answer to this particular question. Now what does the head do? The head determines the interrelation of the unit with other words in the sentence. So Ramalakshmana Ugachataha is a sentence. Now this is a Dvandva compound and this is a case where both Rama and Lakshmana act as the head and therefore we have dual and therefore we also have dual as far as the thing form is concerned. Similarly, the other words are connected to the non-head only through the head and not directly or independently. The head determines the gender and the number of the unit. The head also determines the accent of the unit. Also the head determines the type of the compound. So let us look at the element that is head in various compounds. We have x plus y as input and x, y as the merged output. The four options are following. In the Avyayi Bhava Samasa, we have x which is the first member of the compound which acts as the head and undergoes the functions described in the previous slide. In the Tatpurusha Samasa, Y acts as the head. In the Dvandva Samasa, X, Y both will act as the head. And in the Bahubrihi Samasa, none will be the head. That means that some other outside element which will act as the head of this particular derived output. This is extremely important. Avyayi Bhava, Dvandva and Bahuvrihi will have these important features. I repeat, in Avyayi Bhava, X that is the first member will act as the head. In Dvandva, both X, Y will act as the head and in Bahuvrihi, none of the two will act as the head. Some other outside element will be the head as far as this merged output is concerned. To summarize, merging of two units into one at all levels, meaning word, accent is the main characteristics of the process of compounding. This merging has got some correlation with the constituents of the compounds. But philosophically it is also believed to have different or independent status without having any 
correlation with the constituents or without having any constituents as one over and above the constituents unit where there is one undivided word denoting one undivided meaning but we will not go into the detail of these philosophical explanations we will follow the rules of grammar and the correlation of constituents with the merged unit and we shall be indicating the head of the samasa regularly when we study the three samasas avyayibhava bahuvrihi and dvandva which are the focus of this particular course these are the texts referred to and samarthanika from the vyakarana mahabhashya is very very important for various kinds of explanations of ekarthi bhava and samasa and so on thank you very much